Hey, welcome back to My Point 3 Garage. It has been a few months since I've done an update, but I have been working. Uh, but I got a couple other things going on uh, as well, which slowed this process down like it normally does. But uh, why don't you come on in, I'll show you what I'm doing here. So one of the projects that I've been working on over the last few months is the FAR 70W rebuild. Uh, this transmission had probably close to 200,000 miles on it. We had to replace the tail shaft in it anyway so that it'll match up to uh, the Dana 20. Uh, so all, everything had to come out of it. So I just went ahead and rebuilt it, put the new tail shaft in, put the adapter in, and then we rebuilt the Dana 20 uh, and put the adapter in it as well. So this is all ready to go. Now these videos will be coming out shortly after this video. Uh, I just need to edit them. There's a lot of editing with this one, uh, not quite so much editing with this one. I made them as in-depth as I thought they need to be uh, and tried to add a few other little things in there. So uh, enjoy those videos if you uh, are looking to uh, rebuild either one of those two things. And now on to the 347 stroker that we're building. And I already purchased everything I need to build this motor and we had it all machined. Uh, it is bored over 30 thousandths. Now, now my process for doing this, I wanted to do everything myself, which means that uh, you know, I wanted to have as little machining as possible on the block or anything that's outside of my control uh, just because I wanted to do everything myself. Uh, obviously, boring this 30 over is not something I can do here. So I did look for a recommendation on a good machine shop. When I got it back, uh, not only was it more expensive than uh, we had originally agreed on, uh, but the job that was done on it, uh, and, and granted, I, I don't haven't had a lot of things machined, uh, but I'm going to show you kind of what I have to work with here and, and, and get your opinion on it. So the block was actually fine. I, I didn't find a lot of on the block. The cross hatch on the uh, bore does not look as heavy as I thought it would be. Uh, maybe it's just because of the way that this metal is. I know this is a, a much more dense metal than the early blocks. So I'm going to trust that and, and we're going to go with that. Let's take a look at the pistons and the rotating hardware. Now this is where it concerned me. So when I got these back, um, the machine shop that I took it to did not do any rotating balancing. My number one error was I did not ask, do you do balancing here? I just asked them if they could get it balanced and they said yes. So they sublet it out to a third party that did the balancing, which in hindsight from now on, I'm going to find a place that will balance it and then hopefully that place can also do the machine work on the on the engine as well. But I want to talk to the person that actually did the balancing on it because I, I think that this should be have been done differently. And, and tell me if I'm wrong here. So first of all, when I'm I go through here, nothing is marked. So I, all these markings that are on here are something that I did. So there was no map at all on how they balanced it as far as what piston went with one with what rod um, and uh, I can tell that some machine work has been done on some of these pistons but on others there's nothing done to them and uh, they don't they don't weigh similarly so that's what is odd about it is these two pistons this one has no machine work done to it this one has a lot of machine work done to it they both still weigh different amounts so I don't understand that plus Nothing was marked so that I could put it back together. So I went ahead and I weighed everything individually again using a scale, using a gram scale. And um, every wrist pin, every rod, every piston weighed different. So I put them in an order of lightest to heaviest to kind of make get them to where they're weighing uh, similarly. And my, low, my lightest piston combo was uh, 1,269 grams, 1,269.46 grams. And my heaviest was 1,270.33. So really less than one gram separates all of these, uh, which I'm hearing is probably fine. Um, I would have expected, and if I did it myself, probably get, got it even closer than this. Uh, but my assumption is this is how they had it set up because I just kind of mismatched things until I got everything to, to match up within a gram. So this is the way that I'm gonna go at this point. Um, so that, that was the first thing is, nothing was marked so I could put it back together. 
The second thing was, if you look at some of these, like this right here, and I'm not sure if you can see this or not, um, but let's see, which one is it? Okay, so on, on some of these, and on almost all of them, you can see where they took material off right here, okay? So they took material off right underneath here. But when they did that, this, the actual edge of the rod is narrower here than here. So when they did this, they actually took off this rod material on the side, which, which doesn't make any sense to me, okay? Then you come over here to this one, and it looks like when they did this, they accidentally went onto the, the rod, the side of the rod right here, and they went back and ground the rod to make it a little bit more flush, but you can still see all of the hash marks on this thing. So obviously this is not flat. When you turn it over, this is, the, this is another one where when they ground this, they actually narrowed this uh, edge right here um, by enough to where I can tell it by the, uh, by the naked eye. So this to me does not seem like it is good machine shop work. Um, let me know in the comments what you think of this. Am I being oversensitive? Obviously at this point I have no other choice than to assemble it. I'm actually going to polish these a little bit so that when they're in there and they're rotating, if there is any kind of uh, bumping together, it's the non-chamfered side that has this, so it's going to be up against another rod. So I'm assuming it's probably going to be okay, but I'm going to polish it anyway. But let me know if I'm being oversensitive to this, if this is normal, uh, and maybe just my inexperience with this build is uh, making me a little bit uh, gun-shy here. Um, and then whether or not normally when you're getting these things balanced that the machine shop will do something to match everything so you know how it goes back together again. Because everything was literally back in the boxes that I brought it in and there were no instructions on how to assemble it. So let's head over to the block. So now we get back to the block here. The block actually, when I'm looking at it and I'm looking at the flaws with the rotating kit, um, the block doesn't look as bad. Um, this was done by one machine shop and that was done by another machine shop. Other than the fact that the honing in this looks super light and I can't really distinguish the honed marks on here like like I did when I first pulled it apart and I saw the, uh, the honed marks that uh, Ford had put in here. I'm trusting that they know what they're doing. Obviously they built a lot of engines have been in business for a long time and I'm just going to say that my inexperience probably is not uh, noticing it that well. Uh, but but I, I had them do as little as I needed them to do in order to uh, be able to do some of it myself. So one of the things I asked them not to do was clearance the block or the cylinders uh, for the 347 stroker so that uh, it'll actually clear the rods uh, through the block. I wanted to do that myself, A, to save money, uh, but it doesn't cost that much to do it, but B, just for the experience, I wanted to do it. So up next, we have the transmission video coming up for our 70W. We have the Dana 20 video coming up. We have the Dana 20 adapting to the FAR 70W coming up. We also have the clearancing of this block coming up. And then there was an additional surprise that I found out during this whole thing that has pretty much completely put a hold on this project and it has to do with the engine. And I'll let you know that in the next video. That's a wrap for Mile Point 3 Garage. Thanks for showing up today. Please subscribe. Check out mile3garage.com. That's my website. And thanks for joining us today. We'll see you in the next video.